Ah, the good old Feptop Optimus Prime 1. This is a video letter to Feptop because I have some hard questions about the Feptop Optimus P1. So let's get into it. Last time I blabbered about this 3D printer I was, and I still am very excited about it, but I still have some important questions. There isn't any info on the heat break throat or the extruder mechanism except that is geared. And this is because I would like to just 3D print from the get-go my entire great big head with minimal tuning. That's minimal tuning to the 3D printer. There's nothing minimal about the tuning required for my giant head. We know it's a geared direct extruder, but we do not know anything else about it. Is the heat break throat all metal or a regular heat break throat that takes in the Bowden tube all the way to the hot area, which accelerates its breakdown? We also do not know if the extruder mechanism is dual geared for a more precise and less grinding extrusion or is a single geared extruder. Moreover, we do not know if the gripping gear or gears are chamfered. Usually dual geared extruders are chamfered but it is nice to see it in a picture because a picture usually tells a thousand words or something like that. Basically a dual gear extruder with both gears chamfered is more precise and much more reliable for long extended 3D prints. You may say thanks Captain Obvious but I'm just trying to illustrate the idea to someone that stumbles here and this may be his or her first 3D printer. My first purchase was the S5 and I went big but now I realize it wasn't all that. I just want to make sure this is all that for any newcomer to the game. In addition, we do not know if the heated bed is heated in its entirety, or is it only a portion that is heated. And I am asking this because my Creality S5 only heats up a portion of the bed, and it may be detrimental to the 3D print if it warps upwards while 3D printing. In addition, there isn't any info on how long it takes to bring the entire bed to 100 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Celsius, because 50 degrees Celsius is the temperature where most PLA is 3D printed and not the nozzle temperature, that's the bed temperature. These are very important questions I think any current owner of a 3D printer looking for a second or an nth 3D printer may ask, I know I am, are you? And if you know, the comments are below along with the subscribe button and the thumbs up button. Just turn a blind eye to the thumbs down button. And with the bed this large and a 380-ish watts power supply, I would like to know how long it takes for the bed to heat up to 50, 60 and 100 degrees Celsius. I myself and perhaps others would like to know these numbers right from the website. I'm not sure if this is a marketing strategy or just an oversight on their part. But I can say that upgrading the direct extruder may be an easier task to accomplish than upgrading the heating on the bed or adding other elements more powerful and blending them with already existing firmware and the wiring to make the bed heat up faster. There may be advanced users that may be able to breeze through a bed heating upgrade but I myself and probably a starting novice and or a business startup may just want to 3D print reliably from the get go without doing any of these upgrades if they may be required. I feel that this 3D printer is still an amazing 3D printer especially with all others out there that are in similar size but maybe double the cost. GMAX may be one of them, you may want to look it up. Guys, Feptop, please, if you see this, you may want to get these numbers posted unless this is your marketing strategy for the future. In addition, you may want to check out the artillery 3D printer route, where they use the wall power to control the bed heating, allowing them to use a less powerful power supply and perhaps less expensive. Now, I'm not sure how safe AC heating is, and if it becomes more expensive than the current solution, but as I said before, I really do have my eye on this 3D printer and the potential it has. One nice observation I have to make about the Feptop Optimus P1 is that the enclosure keeps the electronics out even though the electronics are attached to the frame itself. That is a great idea when you need to have the temperature inside the enclosure very high to print out special filament that requires this kind of temperature inside so it doesn't warp. The way they designed this 3D printer and the enclosure was a nice feature. However, I think it would have been nicer if they could design it in such a manner that the Z-steppers were kept outside of the enclosure when you need these kind of temperatures. 
I know that the DirectX shooter cannot be outside, obviously, but maybe also the Core XY system could have been designed in such a manner that the stepper motors for the Core XY, not the DirectX shooter, would have been kept outside the enclosure, therefore would not be exposed to higher temperature when you need to 3D print objects with filament that requires an enclosure and high temperatures within the enclosure. That would have been a nicer touch and maybe some active cooling designed only for for the actual stepper motor that is on the direct extruder would have been also a nice touch. And these upgrades could be easily made by Feptop and sold as a 3D printing kit for or with the enclosure itself. Now I would like to invite anyone to comment their concerns or other ideas in the comments below. And on your way to the comments, maybe you can drop a click on the biggish red subscribe button. But until then, I bid the mon amis farewell and adieu. On this channel I speak mostly about 3D printers and their particular specifications, features or lack thereof. Sometimes I may throw a wrench in the system with a review about my computer setup and or car fixing video. If you think you can stomach this type of format, throw me a like or a subscribe. Thank you.